Good morning everyone. I am teacher Kathy and I am going to make Adler's individual psychology easy for you. But before we proceed to the theory itself, let's start by taking this situation as an example. Imagine a wise philosopher having a chat with a curious girl. The philosopher said, The world is simple, and life is simple too. The girl asked, How? Anyone can see that it is a chaotic mass of contradictions. And the philosopher answered, That is not the reason why the world is chaotic. It is just because you are making it difficult. In this conversation, the philosopher is saying that every one of us sees the world differently because we each have our own way of looking at things. Another example is when you and your friends might see a picture or a painting, but each of you notices different things. Like, you might focus on the cat in the corner, and while your friend notices the rainbow in the sky. These two situations explains Adlerian theory, also known as individual psychology. Just as the philosopher in the first situation emphasizes individual perspectives, Adlerian counseling, also known as the individual psychology, recognizes that each person has their own unique way of seeing, has their own way of uh, understanding the world. It's like having a pair of glasses customized just for you helping you see things from your own point of view, from your own way. So why does this matter, or why does this theory significant for us guidance counselors, or aspiring counselors? Or how is this important for us teachers? Because the guidance sa atong section, sa atong section, kay from teaching professions, no? So how is this theory important for us? Well, this theory is very significant. Especially for young people today, nga itong mga students karon in a world nga everyone is bombarded with different opinions and expectations. Adlerian counseling reminds us that it is okay to be, or it's okay to see things differently. This theory encourages young people to embrace their individuality, their uniqueness, to trust their own perspectives, and to navigate their life with confidence, knowing that their way of seeing things is valid. Letting them know that uh, their perspectives are not silly at all, nor irrational. But before we delve in deeper to the theory, uh, let's take a trip to Hungary first and explore the personality theorist's life story. Alfred Adler, the founder of Individual Psychology, was born in a small town near Vienna on February 7, 1870. He was from Hungary, but later he became a citizen of Austria. He was the second son in his family, and he had five siblings, but two of them died when they were babies. His older brother was his childhood rival, Adler, had this feeling even when they grew up. Hindi naman nga he hate his brother. Feeling lang talaga ni Adler na magi-compete siya sa kuya niya. So Adler was known for his effort of outdoing his older brother. What's so interesting with this is his older brother's name is Sigmund, which later in his adult life made Ad Alfred feel like his acquaintance and now the famous psychologist Sigmund Freud was always superior to him since he had this the same feeling with his older brother in the same name Sigmund. Alfred got sick a lot when he was a kid and he had trouble breathing sometimes. He even nearly died of pneumonia. Because of this and the sadness of losing his baby brother, you see, Rudolph, when they were young, he was motivated to conquer death and become a physician. He went to school and eventually he graduated from the medical school of the University of Vienna in 1895. 
It was during this period that he met and married Raisa Epstein, a Russian social activist deeply involved in advocating for women's rights and social causes, or in other words, a feminist. Through his wife's connections and influence, in 1902, Adler was introduced to Sigmund Freud and got invited to attend the Wednesday evening st uh, study circle, which eventually evolved into the Viennese Psychoanalytical Society. The main force of the psychodynamic perspective are Sigmund Freud, Alfred Adler, and Carl Jung. Though Adler reiterated that he never been a disciple of Freud, rather he is a co-contributor or a collaborator. Sabi nga niya that they are equal daw, hindi daw siya under kay Freud. So dito na, mako-confirm or makikita na ang theme ng buhay ni Adler. However, Adler had developed a social theory and differed from Freud's view of behavior as being biologically or physiologically determined the individual. Freud is very focused on sex and aggression in his theory and the psychosexual development. He is like more focused on the past. In contrast of Freud's theory, Adler emphasizes that every child or every individual is born with innate and unique capabilities and is significantly moving towards the future, not determined by the past. Individuals move toward the future to make themselves whole or to make themselves complete and to feel the tribe na our striving for perfection. Freud branded Adler's theory as radically false. Eventually, the differences between the two, Carl, uh, no, Adler and Freud, became so intensified that Adler and other members of psychoanalytical society, together with Carl Jung, left from the society in 1907. Just like a religion, when Nai Usaka religion and some other members mag be dissatisfied at gumawa ng sariling religion, they're just the same with these personality theories. Now, despite his eventual departure from Freud's circle due to theoretical differences, Adler went on and formed his school of psychology, the Society of Individual Psychology. In 1914, following the World War I, Vienna was in great turmoil. Adler served as a consultant in the schools, holding clinics with the students, parents, and teachers. Adler conducted counseling forums in the open forum with the immediate contact with the teachers and parents and asked them about the child. This involvement in World War I helped the, uh, develop the concept of social interest. Rudolf Drakers, an Austrian-born American psychologist, advocate of Adlerian theory in his child guidance counselor helped to promote and further develop the Adlerian psychology. He was convinced that individual psychology should focus on the education of children at home and in school. Because according to Adler, the root causes of issues with children stem from incapacity to collaborate with society, their sense of seniority, and their lack of purpose in life. Now, what really is individual theory? This is like understanding how each person has their own special way of thinking and feeling. Mainly because ang focus ng theory nito ay ang individual na tao. Diba sa kay Freud in psychoanalysis, nakafocus sa psych ng tao. Feeling niya ay pare-parehas lang halos ang mga tao. Kay Adler, 
individual daw ang tao. Kumbaga, iba ang laman ng psyche ko, iba din ang sayo. Depende yan sa experience mo at sa subjective interpretation mo sa experience mo. Merong instances kasi na you experience or we experience the same thing at the same time with the same people. But magdi-differ pa rin ito kung ano ang focus ng scope of interpretation mo. Like for this identical twins, Zia and Bea spent time together during summer. They experienced the same thing at the same time with the same people. Zia might see their time together as a special sisterhood bonding experience where they are strengthening their connection and making memories. Meanwhile, Bea might focus on the practical aspect of how her feet felt cold when she soaks them in the river, thinking more about physical sensation rather than the emotional aspect of their time together. Adler believed that we have different perspectives, but even though we have different perspectives from each other, we still strive for one thing, and that is superiority. And that brings us to the main tenets, or the main gist, or the main principle of Adlerian theory. The main tenet of individual psychology is that, number one, People are born with weak, inferior bodies, a condition that leads to feelings of inferiority. The one dynamic or the one powerful force behind people's behavior, behind how we think, how we behave, see things, is the striving for success or striving for superiority. Kung si Freud, ang isip niya ay two main drivers drivers or two main motivators ng tao ay via sex and aggression or sex and aggression daw ang nagmumotivate ng tao also called the eros and thanatos or the life and death sabi naman ni Adler hindi daw sex and aggression but the striving for superiority natin meron dun tayong mga inferiority sa self natin that could be physical or any inferiority. Kaya gusto natin na maging superior. Example nga ng isang bata or ang toddler trying to do his first steps because nakita niya or na-interpret niya na ang kawawa niya. Hindi niya, hindi siya makakalakad tulad ng mga nakasurround niya ng mga adults like his parents. There, he is trying his best to start walking as his compensation. Again, the very main principle of this theory is when we were born, we are physically weak. We have inferior bodies. We have the tendency to strive for superiority as a compensation. Na bisan good og walay disability, we just, again, the concept of individual theory, na atong perspective, na atay disability like like a mole or alum sa atang kamay lang nga alum good sa atang and, and an individual could think nga bati daw ihang naw kay naay alum yung agtang bisan dili good maklaro and because of that individual perspective na si inferiority therefore a feeling of unity with others social interest as adler termed it is very significant in people and this is the ultimate standard for psychological health or ang pagiging healthy na individual sabi ni Adler that feeling of inferiority will drive us or will lead us to unify to others so we will become a healthy person but if you prioritize your personal interest naman then you cannot be a healthy individual. The second main tenet is people's subjective perceptions shaped their behavior and personality. The way we interpret others and the things surrounding us 
shape our behavior and personality. Na it doesn't matter kung ano ang nangyayari sa labas. Ang importante ay kung ano ang interpretation mo sa loob. Example lang, uh, the children of OFW parents, for example lang ha, hindi ibig sabihin na hindi niya kasama ang mga magulang niya, ay automatic na ibig sabihin ay magiging hateful na siya sa mga magulang niya. Dahil wala sila sa tabi niya. It, it always depends on the individual or the children's interpretation. Kaya nga, as guidance counselor, we need to observe their pattern of behavior, the pattern of life. In Adlerian's theory, he termed it the style of life. The third tenet is that the personality that we will have is unified and self-consistent. Ibig sabihin, walang conflicts daw. Unlike Freud na magka-conflict ang id, ego, and superego, Sabi kay Adler, hindi ganun. Unified and self natin. Like, may isang pattern lang na tinatawag niyang style of life. The fourth tenet is the value of all human activity must be seen from the viewpoint of social interest. Si Freud, hindi niya sinasabi na may mental or may mentally na healthy individual. Walang paraan na ma-achieve yun na individual ang mental health. Parang sabi niya lang na kung ma-reconcile mo lang yung id, ego, and superego, then healthy ka na. Kaso, lisudid daw i-develop ang uh, balance sa tulog. But for Adler, sabi niya na may healthy na tao. Kapag magkaroon na siya ng social interests or oneness or belongingness or the feeling of oneness with the society, at ma-achieve mo ito, then healthy ka na. But my reminder po si Adler na we need to remember that social interest is not synonymous to charity or selfishness. Like for example, helping in charity, it does not automatically mean na you really have social interest. Because possibly kuno, the other hand, it is the opposite kuno. It might be a stereotyping case na parang binigyan mo ng brand ang mga mahihirap saying na, oh, oh, eto, pera, bigyan ko kayo para magmukha talaga akong mayaman at kayo ay mahirap lang kawawa kayo. Like that. And that you are even like setting a boundary between you, the rich, and yung mga mahirap. So, walang social interest na naki- nakikita. Other example is, an individual na doktor, naging doktor lang, para lang daw makaserve others, na makatulong sa mga nangangailangan. Pero ang innate intention niya ay irerespeto siya sa iba o kaya magpakaawa ang iba na isave yung life nito from death. Ano. So ang subjective goal pala nito ay magmayabang at maging superior in negative way. And that is personal interest ang meron, hindi for social interest. So, hindi yan healthy na individual. The fifth and the last tenet or principle of Adlerian theory is style of life is molded by people's creative power. Another basic understanding or another concept of individual psychology is the concept that each individual has the freedom. Adler termed it as the creative power to create our own style of life or we have the freedom to experience a unique and individualistic and subjective na, uh, style of life. According to Adler, understanding an individual's style of life though is very essential in gaining insight into their behavior and their motivations in life. Kaya nga, pag-explore na to as counselors at mga students with their style of life or their pattern of their behavior or thoughts, it can help us uncover underlying beliefs and attitudes nga. Maybe contributing to their psychological challenges. And those are the main principles of Adlerian theory.
which ends our topic today and if you have more examples of this Adlerian psychology please comment it down below and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get updates of our YouTube channel. Goodbye!